The lockout is over, Speedy. I think the fans are excited that baseball is here and here to stay. 162 games. It's not knocked out to 90. And after the lockout was over, it's been absolutely crazy. Things started opening up. Uh, free agency started opening up again. Trade started to happen. Uh, the Mets traded for uh, Chris Bassett. Uh, they traded away two prospects, which bolsters up their starting rotation. Look at that rotation. You have Bassett, Max Scherzer, and now Jacob DeGrom, your, your three-headed monster over there, Adam Adovito. Uh, from the Boston, uh, the Boston Red Sox, an ex New York Yankee who had a very good season with the Red Sox last year. They signed him to a one year deal. I expect the Mets to still make a couple of more moves. Freddie Freeman, the Yankees made a play for him. They wanted to give him a four year deal worth about 140, I heard. I think there was only one team he really wanted to go to, and that was his hometown team where he grew up, and he grew up an LA Dodgers fan as a kid. Um, obviously, he's very close with Muncie, the second baseman. Freddie Freeman signs a six-year deal worth about $168 million. It's so crazy. I mean, if you look at that roster, is it fair? You look at the Yankees roster. I know Yankee fans are jumping for joy. The Yankees traded Gary Sanchez. Yes, finally, Yankee fans. You've been running them out of town for years. There's no Alex Rodriguez and Jennifer Lopez talking them out of jumping off the ledge or even Joe Girardi trying to tell him that he's not going to play in important games. No. The Yankees decide to move on from him, uh, and I'm very surprised because Brian Cashman loved Gary Sanchez, didn't want to trade him, but uh, they had Josh Donaldson. Now, Josh Donaldson went healthy. Last year, he had 457 at-bats. He had 26 or 25 home runs. He had 70-something RBIs. You put him in the middle of that lineup with DJ LeMayu, Glaber Torres, Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton. I mean, that lineup is loaded. Who are you going to fear more when a lineup is healthy like the Yankees? Is that not the best lineup in baseball? It's one of them. I still wouldn't put them over the Dodgers, though. Really? The Dodgers also have a lot of depth, too. Like The, the, the Dodgers have prospects. They have these utility so guys. So do the they, Yankees. They brought back Chris Taylor. Yeah, but they're not as established. Not, I'm not saying the Yankees aren't one of the best in baseball. They absolutely are when they're healthy. But The question I, is who's playing shortstop. That's that's the question. They got the kid from Texas, uh, Kelly yeah, Kiner Falefa. He's not going to be a full time. He's not going to be a full time guy, but he's actually something that the Yankees could use. He's a switch hitter. He's a guy that could steal bases. So I think it does help them in terms of them being a little more well rounded. I think I think it makes a lot of sense, DJ Lemayo. It's not a bad idea either with Lemayo, and Lemayo could play all over the place too. I think it's just more game plan based. That the Yankees are trying to do be more modern, and I think they've done. Good steps in making that kind of thing work. We don't know who the catcher is going to be. They're working out Wells. Austin Wells has been playing right now in spring training. Maybe uh, he plays well this spring training, and they bring him up early, earlier than expected because they think Austin will be called up next year. But if you look at the infield, you have third base, Josh Donaldson. If you have DJ LeMayu playing shortstop, you have DJ LeMayu. Gleyber Torres playing second, who played very well at second base in the second half of the season. He was batting 300. He was a different player in the second half from shortstop to second base. And then you bring back Rizzo. It's not a, a big consolation prize for the Yankees. Rizzo is one of the top five best first basemen in the league. Is he Freddie Freeman? No. But is he that far off from Freddie Freeman? I would say no. I think Rizzo is still a great player, still a player. He wanted to be there. He wanted the Yankees to sign him. So he wants to be in New York, and I think it's a great fit. Two years, I think the Yankees gave him 20-something million, if yeah, I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was a great contract. Yeah, it was a great contract, and he took less money and less time to play for the Yankees. And then the, the outfield, we know what the outfield's going to be. It's going to be Aaron H- little Aaron Hicks. It's going to be Giancarlo Stan. It's going to be Joey Gallo, and it's going to be Aaron, you know, Aaron Judge. That's a, Look at that power in that outfield. That, that's a good outfield. So... I, I mean, the Yankees are stacked. Now, the question is, what are the Yankees going to do when it comes to their rotation? Now, they have been talking with the A's to go after Manaya. The A's are looking like the trade-away pieces. Yeah. They're rebuilding now. So, Manaya is definitely on, on the Yankees' radar. Do the Yankees make, make a move for Manaya? What, what are the A's going to want for Manaya? Uh, Manaya is their number one guy. So, they're going to want at least one or two top prospects. So, are they going to trade a Dominguez? Are they going to trade a Volpe? Maybe they trade Pariza. The Yankees are going to have to make decisions. Their farm system is getting better. They've added pieces. They brought in the international player, the Dominican kid, who is the best shortstop international player. I think that's why the Yankees didn't go after Carlos Correa, which, by the way, signed with Minnesota the yep. other day. Three years, $105 million, $31 million a year. 
I think that was an affordable contract for the Yankees if they really wanted Correa. I was very surprised when I saw the, the years that he got and he took. He's 26 years old. Now, when he becomes a free agent again, he's still fairly young. He's going right. to be 29 years old. So maybe the Yankees look at him in you know, three years if they don't think Volpe is the guy or they don't think Barreza or the kid from the Dominican Republic is the guy. But he took those shorter contracts. I do believe the tw- Twins, if they don't make the playoffs this year, he's just a trading piece. He, he's a guy that teams, if he's having a good season – and the Twins don't make the playoffs in a bad division, I could see the Twins trading him in the first year that he's there. It's possible because the Twins are are still a team that lacks a lot of pitching, too. Now, they're, I think they'll do a lot better than they were last year. I mean, they're always one of those they teams. They make the playoffs? Uh, they might be the last wild card team with the expanded rosters, but it's still going to be very hard. Seattle got better. Seattle got better. It, it's all going to be a matter of the American League East because they could also cancel each other out, too. Remember, the might, Angels got better. Yeah, they, they have the high expectations every year and never do it. So I, they can't stay I, healthy. I, I buy into them all the time, and they always fall off. They, I, they, so I still think they can. The Twins are always one of those fluky, streaky teams. So, yeah, it's definitely possible. I think it's smart for Correa, though. He realizes that this market, with these new rules in place, could end up boating well for him getting a new contract. Now, you saw Corey Seager go all in for the 10 years. You saw Marcus Simeon go for the 7 years with Texas. And Trevor Story is now still the only one left unsigned. So, the, he's trying to maybe make a alternative play, which I think could be smart, because he's entering free agency again at 29 years old. And if the Twins say, kind of streaky, he's not going to want to stay there, or the Twins will trade him too. So I like that move for, for Correa in terms of a personal thing. In terms of Manaya, I don't think the Yankees will have to trade anybody huge for him because he's 30 years old and he's had a lot of injury issues. He had a great year last year, which will up it a little more, but I don't think you're going to have to give up anybody drastically big for him. I think it's going to be probably two more B-level prospects. It's very interesting because I think the Yankees are still looking for another pitcher to go into that rotation, but the Yankees should be looking at bullpen help, which uh, there's still a lot of good free agents available right now. Uh, Jensen, he went to Atlanta. Uh, now, Atlanta, even though they lost – Freddie Freeman, their their MVP pl- type of player, they bring in Olsen, and maybe it was an agreement with the Braves and Freddie Freeman. I I, I believe Freddie Freeman told the Braves that he that the Braves are out, that he didn't want to go back to the Braves, mm-hmm. and that's why they made the move for Olsen. I think the Braves weren't going like the Yankees weren't going to give him the six years. I think if they gave him if he, Freeman wanted the four years, he would have stayed with the Braves, but the Braves didn't want to do that. I think Olsen was a great consolation prize, good defensive player and a good offensive player, and then you add Jensen. To, to bolster up that that bullpen, which is a, one of the best bullpens in, in baseball last year. So I, I think the Braves are right where they want to be, even where they were last year. And a, a healthy Acuna, they did bring back the outfield depth that they had last year at the trade deadline. So I, I think the Braves are still positioned very, very well uh, to be one of the top teams in the NL. Now, DH position, uh, you know, filling in in the NL is absolutely going to help the NL. With the Mets, I mean, Pete Alonso won't be an everyday first baseman. What the Mets are still doing is trying to figure out what their identity is going to be this year. I listened to Lindor the other day when they were interviewing him and said that he's gonna, he believes he's going to be a different player. He's in better shape than he was last year. A lot of players say that. Now let's see him produce and do the things that he says he's going to do on the field. If he does that, I don't expect Lindor to have the year that he had last year. I don't. And if he does, uh, he's going to be a bust for the Mets. And the Mets fans are going to be really on him because I do believe they overpaid for him. I do. But I still think Francisco Lindor is one of the top three shortstops in the league. Defensively, offensively, the guy could do it all. The question is, can he do it in New York, Speedy? That's the question. Yeah, and again, the question is, can he do it in more better spurts? Because there were spurts in the season where Lindor was the only guy hitting when the Mets started slumping in the second half of the season. And when he was slumping, the Mets were doing well as an all-round lineup. So I think in terms of making the players better, the war that everybody looks at in terms of your team value is going to have to go up for this Mets team to do better. Now, there's better lineup talent around him now with the free agents they brought in, too. But still, that has to affect on your individual performance, too. Cleveland's tried that kind of thing for Lindor towards the end of his career, but then they had to trade him. So can the Mets do better at making it work for him? And hopefully Buck Showalter can find the best players to put him around in that lineup. As far as the Mets, in terms of the rest of the offseason, they still need some pitching depth as well. They brought in Chris Bassett. Again, it's a risky move because he's 33 years old and he was struck badly with a line drive last year. But I don't think they really had to give up a heck of a lot. JT Ginn's a top 10 in their system, but it wasn't one of their super high ones. And that's the main piece they're sending back. So it's a boomer bust type thing, but it gives them depth. So it's fine. Believe it or not, I think the reason why Derek Jeter stepped down is because he wanted the Marlins to make a play for Nick Castellanos. Where does he go? He goes to Philadelphia. Now Philadelphia adds another outfielder with a tremendous amount of talent, tremendous power. Uh, and, and I think when you look at their lineup, they're going to be 
really good, too. At the end of the season last year, Philadelphia picked up their game. They played better. Bryce Harper was the MVP of the National League last year. Now you add another bat to that lineup in the middle of that lineup. I mean, Speedy, this was a great move for Philadelphia. Yeah, the lineup is very good for the Phillies, and we knew that. Just a matter of the injuries with that team. But and the rotation. The, the rotation is, the top two is very good. Zach Wheeler was a Cy Young candidate Fantastic. last year. Aaron Nola's a, a talented pitcher. He's been streaky year to year, but can be good. It's just the rest of it. Can they get anything else? And the bullpen management for whether it's Gabe Kapler, whether it's Joe Girardi, whether it's, it just seems like one that always just struggles, even with big names. They try to bring the names, like the Mets used to be. They bring in all these flashy names and they fall apart. The Phillies are starting to become that kind of team where – you don't have even these big names are not trusted in the bullpen, and it's not like these are bad managers. We know George Girardi's a good manager, and Gabe Kapler won Manager of the Year for the Giants, a, a much less talented team than the Phillies are. So something's up with that bullpen that has to be fixed if they want to take that next step and make the playoffs, which they have the talent offensively to do. They're going to need that so. absolutely. And I think I think when you look at the the National League, the National League is. You, you you look at the talent there. In the National League East, you expect the Braves to be good again. The Mets, with all the moves that they made, the money that uh, obviously Uncle Stevie has spent, I expect the Mets to be right there in the playoffs. Philadelphia, I expect to be good. Even the Nationals, now, they lost a lot of pieces. They have a player, a disgruntled player right now that plays in the outfield who I, I think is, is 22 years old. He wants out. And I think at, at the end of this year, they're going to have to decide. If he doesn't sign a contract, they're going to have to decide – are they keeping him, or are they going to part ways with him? And I think, to me, uh, with, with with a guy like that, and, and, and to me, a lot of people say he's the best player in all of baseball, you have to decide. You could get a boatload of players. I said that with Mike Trout. You're not going to win with Mike Trout. Trade him. So, I mean, Speedy, am I right or wrong? I think they have no choice but to explore the market now because they traded too much already. And, yes, this is the best time to be able to get that kind of value in your division's getting better, too. You could I, get a lot from the Yankees. He wants to go to the Yankees. Yeah. I, I mean, you could get a lot from Right, him. and that would be worth the top prospects you were mentioning before, if you can get a player as young, as durable, and as clutch as Juan Soto. You, if you get Juan Soto, you, you would have to trade Aaron Judge. You're probably going to have to trade Dominguez. You're definitely going to have to trade Dominguez. And, and you'll probably have to trade another, another top prospect, a Pariza or somebody like yeah. that. And, and maybe somebody else. A, a pitching prop, maybe a Gill, to, to, to get somebody like that. So, I, I, but, but is he worth it? Juan Soto is absolutely, absolutely worth, worth, worth it. it. And, and you could solidify that outfield, and, and you, you get that young star that the Yankees have always been doing. Now, Aaron Judge is the face of the Yankees. I know a lot of Yankee fans don't want to hear that Aaron Judge will be on his way out. But if you can get a guy like Juan Soto at 22 years old, 23 years old, he's not even in the prime of his career, mm-hmm. and you can get – the best player in baseball, and some people say he is the best player in baseball, even better than Mike Trout. Analytically speaking, he's been the best pure hitter the last three years. I mean, I mean, if you can get a player like that, you you get yourself, you put yourself in a position uh, to you know put your your you know put your roster where you've always wanted to be, where you, you had it when when Alex Rodriguez was there. So I think, and I expect the Yankees and Juan Soto. You're going to hear a lot of stuff with Juan Soto. I don't count out the Red Sox either for Juan Soto. That's for sure. I. The Dodgers are not going to get Juan Soto. No. They got so much, I, and they're not going to put. I know a lot of Dodger fans think, "Oh, we could get Juan Soto." It's not yeah, going to happen. You have to trade Trey Turner back to the Nationals. Yeah, and, and <laughs> I, don't don't count out the Mets either because uh, the Mets are another team, and I can absolutely see Uncle Stevie saying, "You know what? Why not make a splash? I'll pay Juan Soto four hundred million dollars. I'll bring him here to the Mets. I'll solidify this roster right then and there." So don't count out the Mets either for a Juan Soto.